Hi, if you've already watched one of my other core practical videos, I'm really glad you found it useful enough to click play on this one. But you can skip the first minute, so scroll along. If you haven't zoomed forward, welcome to this core practical video. It's part of a series of videos which I'm hoping will help you to focus on each of the Edexcel Physics GCSE core practicals. For double science students, you only need seven out of the eight, so please skip number four, thermal energy. This is only for the triple scientists. Triples, you need all eight. Assessment of practical work is included as part of the final exams. A minimum of 15% of the total marks must be allocated to questions related to these core practicals. So, I hope you find the video useful and I hope it helps you to revise the experiment that you will have done in your lessons. The seventh and penultimate core practical investigates the properties of water in two experiments. The first by determining the specific heat capacity of water and the second obtaining a temperature time graph for melting ice. The description from Edexcel says the temperature of crust ice must be recorded using a thermometer. This must then be melted using a Bunsen burner and a beaker of water as a water bath. The temperature must be monitored as the ice melts. To determine specific heat capacity of water, the temperature of the water using a thermometer must be monitored while heating it using a heat supply connected to a joule meter. This must then be used to calculate the specific heat capacity. So in this penultimate core practical video, there's two experiments. And the first one is to review what happens when we melt ice. I've adapted the method slightly so that it could be done out of a lab and today in my kitchen. So instead of using a boiling tube with crushed ice in a water bath of hot water, which is then kept warm using a Bunsen burner, I've frozen my thermometer into my ice in a plastic measuring cylinder. I'm using a water bath, that's my Pyrex jug, and that's got hot water in it. That water will continually supply energy to the ice through the experiment. The experiment simply involved measuring the temperature of the ice, and I did that every 30 seconds. And I continued to measure the temperature until a good three minutes after all the ice had melted. It was important that I noted the state, solid or liquid, with each of my readings. When I plotted the results on a graph, I used the points to draw a smooth curve and I labelled the state changes and the point on the graph where the ice was melting. Thermal energy is being supplied to the ice from the hot water in the water bath. The solid ice gets warmer as the particles gain more kinetic energy. But eventually the solid starts to change state into a liquid. We see this as the plateau on the graph. Although energy is still being transferred to the ice, Instead of it raising the temperature of the solid, it's being used to break those strong forces of attraction between the atoms that are in nice neat rows in the solid. So instead of warming up the solid, it's breaking these forces of attraction and the atoms can move into a more random arrangement. The liquid. The solid ice melts into liquid water water. But energy is still being transferred to this cold liquid water, so the water warms up. Eventually it would reach the same temperature as the water in the water bath, but I'm not taking results long enough for that. So that was the melting ice practical, linked to topic 14 because we learn about specific latent heat in that topic. The energy that's taken in or released when one kilogram of a substance changes state. So let's finish core practical seven with the second experiment. The experiment that's all about specific heat capacity. The specific heat capacity is the energy that's needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius.
First, I take an empty polystyrene cup and I pop it on a top and balance and zero it. Then I add water to make it about three quarters full and I record the mass. This mass needs to be in kilograms, so I've got to remember to divide it by a thousand. I'll be using an immersion heater for this experiment. I'll need to be sure that the whole heating element is submerged in the water before I think about turning it on. Immersion heater is connected to a joule meter, which I have zeroed ready to use. And I'm using a thermometer to record the temperature, making sure that I record the initial temperature before I turn anything on. Throughout the experiment, I need the water continually stirred, so I'm using an electronic stirrer here. So when I was ready, I turned everything on and I left the experiment plenty of time to allow for the water to be heated. I needed a change of temperature to record, so I left it for over an hour. At the end, I recorded the final temperature so that I could calculate the temperature rise. I recorded the energy transferred from the heater by taking a reading from the joule meter. Now I need to rearrange the equation to work out the specific heat capacity. And when I do that, I need the change of energy divided by the mass times by the change in temperature. As you can see, my value is considerably higher than the true value of 4,181 joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. And that's down to the fact that the heater's 2,020 joules did not all go into the 0.1 kilograms of water. Energy was also transferred to the polystyrene cup and to the surroundings of my kitchen. Using a polystyrene cup does help to insulate and keep the energy inside the cup, try and keep the heater transferring energy to the water. And I even blocked up the hole at the top of the lid to try and prevent heat losses through convection. And this did actually help me hold the thermometer in place rather well as well to keep it from being directly in contact with the heating element. But all of that still hasn't given us reliable data. Just a practical experience of applying the equation. I hope the video has helped you review the methods for both parts of the practical for Core Practical 7 on the properties of water. You know that. Regular, Regular review! Gets a better grade for you. you. Don't forget to like so that I can keep making the videos. Comment, especially to request other revision topics. Subscribe so you can get notifications of when my next video gets uploaded. <laughs>